What is cooler than an old badass skeleton? Two badass skeletons being pulled by a bone chariot by two skeleton horses. And that's what I'm gonna paint for you guys today, so let's get into it. Now I've been on the hunt recently for old boxes of Warhammer Fantasy and to get something on the sprue is just like having a cherry on top of the cake. Luckily enough, I stumbled across this undead chariot on Facebook Marketplace and I couldn't say no to it. Now the kit comes in like a bone color, which is really cool. So you could just slap on a wash and then call it a day. But I'm gonna try to get this thing as close to the box art as possible for you. I feel like I wouldn't be doing this kit any justice if I didn't try my hardest. Now what is fun about this mini is that it requires some building and I love building models. Nothing beats the sound of that click when it's trimmed off the sprue. There are a few pieces to this model, so I'm going to start by getting the skeleton horses all prepped and finished first. After trimming them off, I attempted to clean their mold lines off. Now I'm going to apologize in advance for this. This kit was completely covered in mold lines absolutely everywhere, and I swear every time I looked at the kit, a new one appeared. It was a bit of a disaster. Next up, I started on the bone chariot and trimmed off all the little sprue bits and gave it a bit of a clean up. The best thing about these kits are that they're so simple that you really don't need instructions. All you have to do is kind of look at the box art and you can kind of get an idea of how it all fits together. I then slapped on some more glue and started putting it all together by adding a cool little spine part to the bone base of the chariot. I then carefully added the wheels and these cool little blades that sit on the side. After this, I had a little crossbar bone that would sit across the back of the horses. Now this is where I need to be a little bit more careful with the build. I decided to put the bar across the horse's back to get the right angle and then simply just glue the rest on. And so it's time for the skeletons and I went for a closed mouth and open mouth option and decided to keep it like the box and go for a spearman and archer combo. Now I was really happy with this kit because it comes with a few spare bits and in the future I want to do a diorama so having spare skulls and weapons and stuff like that is going to be pretty handy. Now gluing these things together was super fiddly and I'm all thumbs so it made it even more difficult. I spent a good 20 minutes just trying to glue these on correctly so their arms wouldn't limp down but I managed to get it in the end. Now what I did here was I left a bit of a sprue on the bottom of the feet of these skeletons so I could secure them on with blue tack for when I primed them. I trimmed off the shield and cleaned it up a little bit. Then I stuck all the pieces down onto my trusty bit of cardboard and took it outside for a prime. Now I didn't have a bone colored prime unfortunately, so I just used white. But if I did have my time again, I definitely would use a bone color prime just to make life easier and cut down some of the steps. Again, this is my first time painting skeletons, so bear with me. I bet there are a few good ways to do this, but I gave them a good base coat of bone white all over. I did about two thin coats of this, just to the horses, the chariot and the skeletons. Now recently I've been playing around with my washes and I find this contrast medium works really well when you mix it in with Skeleton Horde. So with the bone, I found out that a 50-50 mix of Skeleton Horde and technical contrast medium is really the way to go when giving bones a wash. It just gives them a less intense look. Throwing pure Skeleton Horde would just be too much. One thing I did do though was add pure Skeleton Horde just into the eye sockets just to make them a little bit more dark. So after this, I moved on to some highlights to the bones just to give them a little bit more depth. I go over with some bone white to all the raised areas of the bones. Now I'm not going to lie, this was a bit of a mission as there were so many areas for this initial highlight. But as I approach my one year of mini painting, I've come to the conclusion that every single model that you paint will always have an annoying part to it and you just really need to suck it up and get it done. So that's what I did here. I added another final highlight using a mix of bone white and pure white to the top facing areas. You can see how this final highlight gives that readability to the model. Now on the box art, the crossbar bone has this darky red, black, menacing claw-like color to it. So to achieve this, I'm gonna to have to get glazing. I threw down some Abaddon Black as a base. Then I did a mix of 50-50 Abaddon Black and Corn Red in a light glaze consistency, just to about two thirds of the bone. I then mixed in a little bit more corn red into it and then glazed it on some more. Then I went for a pure corn red glaze about halfway. I added in some evil suns to the corn red and just glazed that onto the last quarter. And then finished up with some pure evil sun scarlet just on the tips of the bones. So after this was all done, I then glazed a little bit of black and corn red just all over just to tie it together. Okay, so now time for some base coats and I applied some different browns to the weapons and the quiver. 
I then slapped on some gun metal to all the metal parts, just like the tips of the bow and the spear tip. I then gave all the timbers a wash of Agrax Earthshade. And then went over with some more brown streaks just to give it a bit of a timber effect. I then mixed in a small amount of bone white to this and then did smaller and smaller streaks. Then it was time for some null oil all over the metals. And after that was all dry, I just applied some gun metal to the areas which I wanted light. And then I just added a nice little touch up of silver just to the tips. Now it's time to move on to something fun and I wanted to make the blades on the side of the chariot look really rusted. So what I did was base coated these blades black and then added a couple coats of Doomble Brown as this has a really nice red tone to it. Once that was done, I grabbed some sponge and dipped it in some Baylor Brown, making sure to sponge off the excess. I then grabbed a clean sponge and then dabbed some more Doomble Brown over the top of it. And to finish up, I then grabbed a clean sponge, dipped it in some gunmetal, and just dabbed it all over. So this was looking good, but it was still a little bit too shiny for me, so I grabbed some null oil and just applied this all over. Alright, so we're looking good now, so time to move on to some freehand. And two weeks ago, I did a skull for my Legion of the Damned mini. So on this one, I'm going to do something a little bit different and make it look a bit more vampiric, if that's a word. I gave the rim of the shield a coat of gunmetal. I then added some corn red to the base to build up the reds. And then applied some Null Oil all over. After this, I applied a wash of Flesh Terror's red, just making sure I went right up to the edges. Then I applied a couple coats of Evil Sun Scarlet, just being careful not to touch the edges, just so it has that dark rim around it. Now for the fun or painful part, and what I do here is, I sketch on two lines of Xandri Dust, one straight down and then one straight across. I tried centering these lines as best as I could, and I used the bolts on the shield just as a guide. Now just as an FYI, I feel like I could have done a better job centering this, but I'm not going for Golden Demon, so oh well, better luck next time. Then I just go for half a circle on top and a squiggly line down the bottom. I colour in the shape with a couple thin coats of Xandri dust and then I just add some little lines for the teeth. Now to move on to the outlining of the skull and I'm using dryad bark for this, not black this time, just to try blend it in more with the brown tones. So I did start off doing the outside of the skull but I had an urge to paint the nose and eyes first so I moved on to that pretty quickly. And just like last time, I used triangles to mark the nose shape and the eyes. So I went around with my dryad bark made sure the outline was all good, I didn't do the teeth, and what I will do is save the teeth to last. So it's time to highlight the skull, and I did this by mixing up some bone white and Xandri dust, and applied that to all the raised areas of the skull, around the eyes and the nose. Then I mixed in a little more bone white to the mix, and did a smaller area. After this, I went for a pure bone highlight and made these areas even smaller. And for a final highlight, I mixed in one part white to one part bone and just gave it a spot highlight all around the skull. I then applied this to the teeth as well. And to finish up, I went around the teeth super carefully with my thinnest brush, just using dryad bark and really took my time. And that's it guys, after this I spent about an hour and a half gluing this thing together, it was an absolute nightmare. These old skeletons are so delicate and so tricky to place and to stand upright, but we got there in the end. But anyway, here is my undead chariot. Thanks so much for watching my dudes, please like and subscribe. Let me know down in the comments what you'd like to see me paint next and I'll see you next time. Cheers.